today I want to talk about the electoral process. And we're going to look at it from the kingdom perspective. Let me give a caveat so that you understand. So this is my PVC. This is for my wife. The face has not cleaned. For many years I've, have, I've been voting so that I didn't come to tell you I'm, not, I'm a voter, a registered voter and a... I, I, I vote. My voting, my polling unit is just about five to ten minutes walk from my house. And um, I like to even thank Nigeria that my wife was at home, changed her polling station, and they gave her her card. I know you don't clap for such things. <laughs> from her she changed her pulling station, her pulling unit. And her card came out. Not only have I seen many people like that. How many of you gave testimony like that? Some of you say, now today, they want, they, now today they don't reach that side. Thank you very much. God bless you. Another caveat is this. I'm not in any political party. I'm not a card carrying member. So that for you to know. Number three, I didn't come to endorse any person. I have not done it before. I will never do it. I can campaign for my own country outside this place. The pulpit is to exalt the name of God. And to bring in the kingdom of God. So those are the things I want to put in place so that you understand these are the premises. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1 to 3, then 6 to 7, I'll be giving you some basic foundation as it relates to God's kingdom, as it relates to the governance on the face of the earth. The family of God must go back to the original purpose, original way of discipling. The original way of discipling is the Amujuram system, which is what is called Amajirin. It's what Jesus used to disciple his 12 disciples and other disciples. They stayed with him. They went with him. They saw how he ate his time of vulnerability. He taught them not only by words, but by they caught some things by being with him. We need to go back to that system where people have to come and stay with you live with you, to understand how to do marriage, to understand how to do family, to understand because the Africans, we understood covenants until we were civilized. I want to say it again. The Africans understood covenants until we are civilized. Witches like to enter covens and when you put A-N-T to covens, they become covenant. But many believers don't want to belong to a local church. Because they don't know the power of covenant. Isaiah 9, 1 to 3. Nevertheless, the gloom will not be upon her who is distressed as when at first he lightly esteemed the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. And afterward more heavily oppressed her by the way of the sea beyond the Jordan in Gagli of the Gentiles. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them a light has shined. You have multiplied the nation and increased its joy. They rejoice before you according to the joy of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Verse 6. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with judgment and justice from that time forward, even forevermore. The zeal, the zeal, not your zeal, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Not your zeal, not your anger. We perform this. 
I want to read from Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 9 to 18. Deuteronomy is called Devarim in Hebrew. It is the double giving of the law. So if you read Deuteronomy, it's as if you are reading again Exodus. Because they were about to enter the promised land as a nation. They were a bunch of slaves who were going into a, to, to form another nation. And they have never led themselves before. In fact, for 430 years, the only thing they understood was bondage. And God judged. He brought them out of bondage. He gave them laws so that they could govern themselves. Understand it. He judged. He gave them laws so that they could, they could govern themselves. That is Isaiah chapter 33, verse 22. Our God is a judge, is a lawgiver, and is our king. He will save us. I'm going somewhere so that you follow me very well. Question I need to ask, how many people are vying for Senate in this state? And how many people are vying for House of Rep in this state? Write it down. Deuteronomy 1, chapter 9, verse 18. At that time I said to you, you are too heavy a burden for me to carry alone. He was referring to Exodus now. And we'll read about that one. The Lord your God has increased your numbers so that today you are as many as the stars in the sky. May the Lord, the God of your fathers, increase you a thousand times and bless you as he has promised. But now, can I bear your problems and your burdens and your disputes all by myself? Choose some wise, understanding and respected men from each of your tribes and I will set them over you. You answered me, what you propose to do is good. He was referring to Exodus. He was trying to tell them, this is what we set it in place. So I took the leading men of your tribes, wise and respectable men, and appointed them to have authority over you as commanders of thousands of hundreds, of thousands, of hundreds, of fifties, and of tens, and as tribal officials. And I charged your judges at that time, hear the disputes between your people and judge fairly. Whether the case is between two Israelites or between an Israelite, a foreigner residing among you, do not show partiality or partiality in judging. Hear both small and great alike. Do not be afraid of anyone, for judgment belongs to the Lord. Bring me any case too hard for you, and I will hear it. And at that time, I told you everything you were to do. He said, bring me the cases that are too hard. That means that in the beginning, when they were sending the nation, there was, a, there was cause for appeal. So what you are seeing now on earth is as it's in heaven. So today I want to talk about the electoral process in Nigeria, even in other nations. How to vote who your candidate should be. Individually, not as a church. You have, there are people who are card carrying members of PDP here, two of us. APC, ADC, Labour, I mean card carrying member. AAC, AC, there are plenty. There are plenty. And it's good. It's good, it's good. Don't. Now, we're going to look at biblical views of government and the electoral process participation. The biblical views. You see, the Bible is not a book for religion. First of all, it's a cultural document on how to develop a nation. So Jesus did not come with another religion. No wonder he said his first message was this, repent for the kingdom of God is here. He didn't start a religion. He brought with him a kingdom that works. A kingdom that works. Landa Cope made a statement. He said, without biblical worldviews and community of faith in place, we will continue to see wicked rulers rise and kingdom expression curtailed. I repeat again. Without biblical worldviews and community of faith in place, we will continue to see wicked rulers rise and kingdom expression curtailed. The creator of every governmental structure on earth and heaven is God. I want to repeat it again. The creator of every governmental structure on earth and heaven is God. Whether you call it a monarchical system 
or you call it a system that Switzerland is still, is still using today, just as the Bible, they, they are ruled by seven people. Only one person is a ceremonial head if you want to talk about the president. So it's just ceremonial. Or you are talking about the parliamentary system or any other system. It is done by God. Never forget that. Because many people in Africa are talking about Rwanda now. Some of us are going to do our retreat there. But how many years has Kegame been on the throne? In Colossians chapter 1 verse 16, the Bible says, For by him all things were created. Because I'm not saying this thing because I want to, I'm reading scriptures to it. For by him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. Put that in place as your constitution. These are the governing things of your life. Not the pain you are feeling or any other criticism that is going on. It must be. So the confusion of government and politics have made us miss our opportunities to impact and influence our culture in the significant, in the significant and powerful way. We are confused politics and government. So the person you vote for, if he does not win throughout that four years, you are attacking as a believer. You might be attacking as an opposition. I don't. There's nowhere put in place where at the church we do demonstration. But you can do demonstration as a civil society. You can join. Now, in Jeremiah 29 verse 7, this is the confusion. But Jesus, when God was writing this thing, the, his own children were in exile. And he said to, by Jeremiah, he said, And seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because of it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. I have carried you to this, to this nation, I've exiled you there. When you get there, don't curse the land. Pray for the peace of it. Because if that land prospers, you will prosper. I don't have a problem for you, Jack Mine or Jack Bar. The problem, the thing is, why are you going there? Because there is peace and prosperity there. And you are going to save your, take from it, the one you did not create. What about the land he has put you? Somebody was giving me a testimony that somebody called her and said, I, I was about to release costs on this land and your face showed up. And you people say we should not cause this land. That's why I'm calling you. Are you calling somebody? Because you don't understand why God says you should not cause the land. As believers, we can be governmental without being partisan. For the government shall be upon his shoulders. We are the body of Christ is the head. And the government is upon, not upon the head, but upon the shoulders. So the responsibility for government or governance is not upon Jesus. But Jesus is the head of all principalities and powers. He has given that responsibility because the earth he has given to the sons of men. So if you have a wicked ruler ruling us, then it is the responsibility, it's us not actually embracing our responsibility. And I pray we don't make the mistake again. In the name of Jesus Christ. So there's a difference between a politician and a politicaster. Everything that we have been seeing now has been politicasting. A politician, the definition of a politician is a role model citizen. 
The one who will sacrifice for others, the one who is upright. A politicaster is a perversion of the politician. The politicaster is the one that is there for his own benefit. And most times we do that, we do this. Somebody was sharing this in an and he said it, and the person said, I'm from Greece, so I understand what you are saying. Because when you talk about Ecclesia, Ecclesia is, that's why the book of Ecclesiastics. The book of Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastics are governmental books. The book of Ecclesiastics was written to the Ecclesia, the ruling body of, this, of, of, of the day. To tell them how to govern. And so you must understand that the book you are carrying as the Bible is not to fight devil. Because devil is not the one. The attention to, is it real? Yes, it's real. But we give him too much attention. Should we be aware of his strategy? Yes. Should we cast him out? Yes. Now, I put that in place. So some of you are telling yourself, I don't want to be a politician. It's too dirty. And some, we preached that before. And that's what disempowered people from going to politics. Now, we are going to the other extreme. There is nowhere too dark for light not to enter. There is no place too dark that light should not enter. The only thing is that we enter without our light strong. And so when we get there, the rod of the wicked rests upon us. Now the electoral process. Believers are being faithful stewards when we participate in the electoral process. I want to say it again. I did not do PVC Sunday. You know why? I will tell you why after. Is that I command you and force you. If you get the PVC, will you even vote? Huh? Some people will not vote. Because that day, I remember how many sons have stood under. Uh, and to now find out that the person you voted for did not win. So, you need to participate in the process. Whether your candidate win or not. And I will tell you why you need to participate. In Romans chapter 13, verse 5 to 7. Therefore, you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes. For they are God's ministers. Who are God's ministers? Government officials. So when you see governor come to church and he sits near pastor, this is a scripture. When you see commissioners, you see people who are in a national assembly come into the church and they sit where pastors sit. That's the scripture. Before you go on social media now. He said they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their due. Taxes to whom taxes? Mm -hmm. Are due. Customs to whom customs? Fear to whom fear? Honor to whom honor? Now, positive changes, or positive change can be brought to our nation by electing officials who are God-fearing and God-appointed. But if we don't participate, we have relinquished our God-given role to non-believers by default. The Bible says in Romans chapter 13, verse 1, let every soul 
be subject to governing authorities. Let every soul. For there is no authority except from God, and the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So our president is appointed by God. I'm not preaching from your own Bible. I'm preaching from the one he gave us. Your governor is appointed by God. The National Assembly is appointed by God. Deuteronomy 113 reiterated it. It says wisdom, understanding, and respectability. In those days in Africa, you are not a respectable man until the people in the community say you are respectable. You are not a man of honor. You are not a man that, that does not collect bribe until everybody says you are not there. Listen, there used to be those days when we used to walk on the street, we see one man, he's always reading paper. He will now put his say, where are you coming from? If that man beats you, your parents cannot say...